Welcome to my unboxing and disassembly of the Optiplex 3220. Please select any chapter you require or continue to watch the video which will autoplay in a second. To open the box you will need a knife or as I use a screwdriver you will need to uh, cut the tape at the top and then undo the flap and the inner flap and the two secondary flaps and then you can then pull out uh, the bottom of the K, uh, stand which is as shown then you have a keyboard a standard Dell uh, keyboard not multimedia one is included with it um, you also have the main stand itself the, uh, the actual structure part of the stand which has to join together with the base and I'll show as I'm just going to show you how it's done you push it in then you at the bottom there is a little twist screw which pops out so you can do it without a screwdriver as shown and that is sturdy and ready to go in just closing that out a little rubbish out of the way Uh, there's also a accessory box. This is where all your uh, quick start guides and your there's your power cable, uh, standard uh, kettle lead 1.5, 1.8 meters. Uh, it's your standard mouse that will include with it. Nothing special. Um, this is your cable mount. So on the back of the monitor, you would install this to stop people playing or pulling out the cables. It's, you can use a screw as well to tighten that in. Um, standard clip. Uh, this is your quick start guide, uh, just overview of the 3240 and then safety and regulations guide which everybody looks at. Uh, now for the main unit, so it does come quite well packed, um, you do have to remove two bits of, sort of cardboard type material and then you can lift it out as shown. And you can lay it gently flat on the table and you can peel off the sort of foam material around it. For ports, on the left hand side you have two super speed USB 3 ports, a headphone microphone jack combo, a SD card slot. On the bottom you have a DisplayPort 1.2 connector a headphone microphone jack again, a, a HDMI 1.4 connector, super speed USB 3, uh, USB 2 ports, uh, give it LAN, power, power supply reset, power supply indicator to tell you if it's powered. And you have Visa mounting holes at the back to go onto stand as we show in our video. Uh, that's the intake for your CPU fan. Uh, there's also a a little sliding piece of plastic to hide the camera if you don't want to be seen, hacked or whatever. Uh, you also got a DVD drive on the left hand side. You also have brightness control for the screen and also uh, a, a status LED and a power button. Hard drive status LED. Uh, two speakers at the back, the bottom, and ink takes. And then that's your 20. Uh, two inch screen 1080p. The stand fits in as shown. You click it in, and then push down at the bottom and clicks to lock. Pull off the plastic, and this is the completed unit. Very sturdy and uh, well built machine. To disassemble this machine, please lay it flat on the front pull from the right hand side then the left hand side and it will then release, you usually have to do this quite hard uh, you now have access to inside the machine to access the memory in the CPU compartments press the metal tab and then just slide it usually with a little bit of force sometimes and then you can take the metal cabinet off to move the hard drive just slide the metal to caddy up and it comes out as shown uh, we're now going to take um, the Visa mounting bracket off. So to do that, you there's four screws. 
So that's one of them. Um, there's one underneath the cable. There's one on the right there. There's four in total. Uh, one underneath there. Helps if you have a magnetic screwdriver as well, as you can see. And there is one. Wait, I'm trying to find underneath that cable there. You will need to remove the cables before you start trying to unscrew it. Now you have the uh, screws out. Uh, you can uh, do two things. You can disconnect the power cable, um, which is what I try to do here, but give up on. Or you can carefully slide the metal bracket underneath the uh, power cables. So if you give it like two seconds and figure that out. There you go. So if you slide it gently, try not to catch the power cables as you do this. And this now gives you access to the CPU compartment, uh, CPU fan, and access so you can change it. As you can see, there's a damage to this fan due to someone putting a screw in the wrong place. You'll need to put take away and take out three fan, uh, three screws from around the fan. Uh, as I'll show here, you now can actually remove the fan, uh, but I've not figured that out yet at this point. Um, there's one. If you want to remove the heatsink itself, um, there's one on that side of the heatsink, and then um, on the CPU block itself, you have four which you can take out. So I am going to realise in a sec. There we go and you can remove the 4 pin uh, board connector which is what controls the fan PWM fan and then it comes out as shown you can see the damage to it um, and then you go around gently loosening the screws corner to corner usually as you release it you do this for tightening as well and it actually writes uh, the description of what the object is that needs to go there. So it's quite nice. Dell do can sort of have engineers in mind. Um, then after that, should we just pop off as shown? Uh, then to access the CPU, just remove the uh, the uh, lever. That's the uh, Core i5 6500. To remove the memory, each side of the memory chip has two clips, push them outwards and just gently slide out, it will release the memory module as shown. To install the memory module, put it in at an angle, make sure the groove matches up, push down and it will lock. Make sure it is seated properly and the gold pins are connected and it will lock in properly. Uh, and just pull it out here to change something. Uh, to put the CPU back in, move the retention arm up and out. Make sure the it does the two grooves match and the arrow is pointing. There's a little uh, arrow in one of the corners and it's pointing with the arrow on the motherboard. Let's hit here, I just check in the grooves match up. Gently, lo gently lower it into the socket and then push the retention arm back to it clips in place as shown. If you do do this, you should clean off the uh, thermal paste and then put it back on again. Um, I'm not showing that in this video. Uh, this is how you remove the power supply as well. You take one screw out and it slides to be removed. comes out as so. And then the power comes in from there slides back into place and then with one screw it goes back together again when you get it in the right hole. To install the hard drive, 
slide it into the caddy, just pushing gently till it clicks into place, as shown. To install the CPU heatsink, just line it up correctly. You should uh, change thermal paste, as I talked about earlier. Um, gently, each corner, tighten the screws up. And try not to put too much force on as you do this. Do not over tighten the screws as you can damage the ball. Uh, you will need to put the last screw on, uh, on the other side of the heatsink as well. Uh, I'm just showing the damage that happened to the uh, heatsink fan here. I'm going to put one screw in the heatsink fan itself. And gently lower the CPU fan into the uh, bay for it. I'm going to put one, uh, all the three screws round it to tighten it into place. Make sure you do connect up the PWM fan header for the fan, the little four pin connector, otherwise um, the fan won't work and if it does post you'll have a frying chip on your hand. And okay, so uh, now we just need to put the visa mount back on, try and get it the right way up. Um, slide it in under the cables, carefully. Make sure that all the holes match up and there's no cables in the way. Once this is done, you can start putting all, one, one, uh, all the four screws back into place. As shown, in it goes now. There's two um, uh, easy to see, and then there's two, usually, uh, two buried underneath the cables. Again, try not to over tighten when you do this. So that last screw now. Once uh, you have completed putting all the screws in, uh, if you start to put the cables back into the cable management, carefully as you do it, and so they don't slip out, and just look around, checking that the cables are properly installed and are not going to be in the way of anything. This is the chassis intrusion switch. When pressed, it registers that the uh, chassis has been opened in BIOS. And this is the BIOS reset header for the password. If you forget the password or need to change it. To ins install the uh, metal shroud, just slide it in when it's into place and it will lock. It will feel like it's not locked, but as you can see, it is actually locked into place. Once you do that, done that, you can uh, test it is powering on because I would recommend it at this point. Just so check it post after repairing it or disassembling it. Um, this machine got a 3D Mark Vantage score of uh, 5,195. As you can see, this is one of the machines I tested. As you can see, the CPU is the strongest. The GPU is the integrated Intel chipset, so is isn't particularly impressive. But if we look up the comparison results, um, as you can see, it comes nowhere close any machine from about 2009. But if we compare it to a, a Office PC, it is far better than an Office PC. Thanks for watching.